Hello, this is part 19 of preparation for NSE for exam. This part is SSL, SSL VPN. SSL VPN, virtual private networks, are an easy way to give remote users access to your private network. This part, SSL VPN, consists of three parts. First one is SSL VPN deployment modes. Second, configuring SSL VPNs. Third part is monitoring and troubleshooting of SSL VPN. So, part one, SSL VPN deployment modes. First mode is tunnel mode. Tunnel mode is assessed through Poti client. Tunnel mode requires a virtual adapter on the client host. Web mode. Web mode requires only a web browser which supports limited number of protocols. Supported protocols are FTP, which is File Transfer Protocol, HTTP and HTTPS protocols. Uh, HTTPS is a secured uh, encrypted version of HTTP Hypertext Protocol. RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol, SMB or CIF S protocol, SSH, Telnet, VNC, and PIN. To configure using graphical user interface, we go to VPN, SSL VPN portals, and to configure it via command line interface, we go to Config VPN SSL web portal, edit, enter the portal name, set tunnel mode, enable or disable, set web made, enable or disable, and web mode. Web mode connects to the FortiGate SSL VPN portal from any browser. The web portal displays the status of SSL VPN. The SSL VPN stays up only while SSL VPN portal page is open. Access internal network resources easily using bookmarks and quick connections. When you use bookmarks, there is a selection on SSL VPN using portal. For quick connection, there is a widget which allows to type a URL or IP address if you want what you want to reach. Disadvantages of a web mode. First, interaction with internal network exclusively by browser. Uh, through SSL VPN portal, internal network applications cannot send data across VPN. Second disadvantage is a limited number of protocols supported. How does web mode work? First, uh, remote users connect to the SSL VPN portal, HTTPS web page on FortiGate. Second, user authenticates. Third, user access resources through the quick connection launcher or bookmarks. Different users can have different portals with different resources 
and access permissions. The source IP address seen by remote resources in FortiGate's internal IP address and not user's IP address. Tunnel mode. Connect to FortiGate through FortiClient. Tunnel is up only while the SSL VPN client is connected. FortiClient adds a virtual network adapter called FortiSSL. FortiGate establishes the tunnel and assigns a virtual IP address to the client from a pool of reserved IP addresses. All traffic is encapsulated with SSL TLS. Advantage of tunnel mode that any IP network application or many protocols on the client can send um, traffic through the tunnel. And disadvantage of tunnel mode is that it requires an installation of VPN client. How does tunnel mode work? First, remote users connect to the SSL VPN gateway through the SSL VPN client. Second, users authenticate. Third step is that virtual adapter creates the tunnel SSL TLS. FortiGate assigns an IP address to the client's virtual network adapter, FortiSSL. This is the client's source IP address for the duration of the connection. Step 4. Users access resources through an encrypted tunnel SSL TLS. FortiClient encrypts all traffic from the remote computer and sends it over SSL VPN tunnel. FortiGate receives the encrypted traffic, then Decapsulates the IP packets and forwards them to the private network as the traffic originated from inside the network. Tunnel mode FortiGate as a client. Connect to server FortiGate device as VPN client. Use SSL VPN tunnel interface type. Devices connect to FortiGate device and can access resources for behind the server FortiGate. Tunnel established between two FortiGate devices. There could be topologies like hub and spoke and client um, FortiGate dynamically adds route to the remote uh, subnets um, and assigns a virtual IP address to the client FortiGate device from a pool of reserved IP addresses. Advantages of tunnel mode FortiGate as a client. Any IP network application on the user or client, mach client machines connect to FortiGate device and can send traffic through the tunnel. It's useful to avoid issues caused by intermediate devices such as ESP packets being blocked, UDP ports 500 or 4000 500 being blocked, fragments being dropped, causing ICE negotiation that uses large certificates to fail if the peer does not support ICE fragmentation. ICE stands for Internet 
key exchange protocol. Disadvantage requires proper CA certificate on SSL VPN server 48. SSL VPN client 48 user uses PSK, PSK stands for pre-shared key, and PKI, public key infrastructure, certificates to authenticate. How does tunnel mode 40 gate as a client work? First, uh, SSL VPN client 40 gate initiates connection to SSL VPN server 40 gate. Step 2. SSL VPN client 40 gate uses PSK pre-shared key local user account and PKI, public key infrastructure uh, client, to authenticate. Step 3. The virtual SSL VPN tunnel interface creates the tunnel. IP address assigned from SSL VPN server 40 gate. Route is added to client to access subnets on remote 40 gate. Users' devices access resources through an encrypted tunnel SSL TLS. Users' devices, for example, personal computers or mobiles, they can connect to SSL VPN client. SSL VPN client connects to SSL VPN remote server and that way it connects to remote resources. Tunnel mode slip split tunneling. If it is disabled, all traffic goes through SSL VPN tunnel to a remote 40 gate then to the destination. This includes internet traffic. An ingress, egress, which is up, uh, coming from you traffic, um, firewall policy is required. Uh, traffic inspection and security features can be applied. Tunnel mode split tunneling, if it is enabled, only traffic destined for the private network is routed through the remote 40 gate. Internet traffic uses the local gateway and it is unencrypted route. It reserves bandwidth and alleviates bottlenecks. There is no traffic inspection by 40 gate. A web mode SSL VPN uses bookmarks to access internal network resources. Next part will be about configuring SSL VPNs.